Welcome to Beamish Museum in late April 2021. We're in the process of getting ready for our main season at Beamish. Um, and normally the transport season would kick off at Beamish in early April with our Great North Steam Fair. Obviously because of the coronavirus pandemic, the Great North Steam Fair in 2020 and in 2021 have unfortunately been cancelled. We do however want to keep interest in our transport exhibits going and last year midway through the first coronavirus lockdown um, a girl from County Durham called Charlie Cools came up with an idea for doing a steam rally which was based on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and other social media and the idea behind this was that Normally, through the year, the steam fraternity would go to traction engine rallies. They would see each other, see each other's steam engines and enjoy having a good time in each other's company. But the coronavirus pandemic put a stop to that. Obviously, the museum was closed in 2020, so we were unfortunately not able to take part in the Twitter steam rally in 2020. Because the situation for traction engine rallies and the likes not a lot better yet, there's another Twitter steam rally taking place in 2021, which this year will be on the 1st of May. The Twitter steam rally will uh, take place internationally. Basically, if you own a steam engine, you can go on the Twitter rally Facebook page, Twitter page, whatever, Upload photos, videos, stories of you, how you would attend a traction engine rally in the past. So at Beamish we're going to join in this on the 1st of May and we'll have four engines running on the colliery railways all day and you can join our Facebook, our Twitter page and see what we're doing through the day. We'll be running the two engines on the standard gauge railway that are behind me, Coffee Pot and number 18, and on the two foot gauge we'll be running Samson and Glitter. Earlier on in the year, through the January lockdown, we were working hard to ensure that our transport exhibits were ready for the year. So the rest of this video is us getting our engines ready for annual boiler exam and what that entails. If you're a follower of the Beamish Transport Online blog, you'll have seen a post in November about us getting our steam boilers ready for annual boiler exam. If you're not a follower of Beamish Transport Online, why not? Go register on the link that our team are going to edit now. Once we've got all our boilers ready for annual boiler exam, a surveyor from British Engineering Services comes out to inspect the boilers. It's a statutory inspection, um, we can't avoid it if we want to use the boilers. So we're here at the end of lockdown in the start of March with the surveyor doing the cold examinations on Peckett 2000 and Peckett 1370 behind us. Um, the engineering surveyor will inspect the boiler thoroughly internally and externally as far as he can access it all. Um, and there's a lot of things that we have to take off the engine to enable the access and to enable inspection. With everything we've taken off the boiler can be inspected internally so if you see down here you see this hole in the side of the outer firebox and normally this door would be in that hole um, to hold in the water and boiler pressure. Um, the British Engineering Surveyor um, needs all these and the similar washout plugs removed so that he can inspect the boiler internally. The external wear accessible bit um, includes in the smoke box and the firebox and through the power of editing we'll be cut in to see our British engineering surveyor Andy Wright doing the examinations in the smoke boxes and fireboxes. There's quite a bit of confined space working um, so Engineering surveyors are fit, narrow, tend to be a bit smaller <laughs> to access all these areas. Small as you. <laughs> I, you can put this bit in the video. I generally go on the rule of thumb that if I can get in there, the British engineering surveyor can get in there. 
So whilst our comms team edit this video up and give you some footage of Andy Wright, our surveyor, carrying out the boiler exams, Barry Hall from British Engineering Services is just going to give a short piece on the history of the British Engineering Services company. Um, they, their roots are quite local to Beamish and they're um, a very old company with um, significant experience in what we're doing with steam boilers. Hi, um, we're here today doing a, um, a steam test, just a bit, a bit of a history of our, our business. Um, our business originally from 1859, uh, our chief engineer, uh, Robert Longridge, uh, local, local to the area here, um, from Bedlington. His father, Michael Longridge, was the engineer and manager at Bedlington Nine Works, and Bedlington Nine Works originally um, made anchors and, and cast iron items, um, but then progressed into um, iron rails and and Bedlam Nine Works actually was the first company to build or build the most malle malleable rails um, within Europe and many rails that went down in in places like Italy and Holland were actually made at Bedlam Nine Works but his son um, Robert Longridge became our chief engineer in, in our business in 1859 um, we currently then moved on and the reason why our, our heritage or our business sort of began was um, iron and, and mill, mill, mills were actually concerned about their boilers blowing up so it wasn't necessarily about health and safety which we, we all talk about today and that's why we're here to do the, the inspection. In the background now you can hear a load of hammering going on. Um, it's quite a simple test that's going on as part of the boiler exam. Andy is in the firebox on 2000 and the hammering you can hear is the hammer testing of all the stays that hold the inner, out, inner and outer firebox um, together and apart by a set distance. Um, if the stays start breaking that becomes a problem um, and a quick simple way of testing whether the stays are intact or not is a hammer test and both the sound of the hammer and the feel of the hammer um, gives the surveyor an indication as to whether the stays are in good condition or not. The other things that get hammer tested are the foundation ring rivets which are at the bottom of the firebox um, and again it's sound and feel. With a foundation ring rivet obviously the worst case scenario is you hit it with the hammer and the head falls off but that is an incredibly rare occurrence and one that I've not yet seen. As well as inspecting the boiler on the cold out of steam exam which we're doing at the moment the boiler inspector will also inspect the pressure gauge which is this that I've got in my hand here. Um, the boiler pressure gauge normally mounted on the front of the cab with a pipe to it and reads off how much steam pressure we've got in the boiler. Um, the boiler inspector's got a device which he attaches to the pressure gauge to check the calibration of the gauge and that um, ensures that the gauge is reading correctly throughout its entire range that it can read and also tells us whether the pressure gauge might be reading slightly fast or slow um, and if it's out by too far we have to get the gauge um, overhauled and calibrated so that it is reading correctly. Um, so that's done with a little hand pump by the boiler examiner to prove that the pressure gauge is telling us the truth when it's on the boiler. With the power of editing, we're now in the colliery yard and we're going to have a look at coffee pot number one. Um, today's steam test day, so we need to light the engine up ready for the boiler inspector later on today. Uh, we'll show you that process. As we've said through the video, you see various different engines all the way through. So you'll see us lighting coffee pot up, 
but this afternoon when we do the actual steam test with the boiler examiner you'll actually see Puffin Billy just to give a variety and show our fleet off. Now in the colliery engine shed with coffee pot. Um, it's important when we're lighting steam engines up from cold that we avoid any thermal stresses in the boiler by heating them up too quickly. So coffee pot was actually uh, had a fire in it yesterday to bring the water up to a suitable boiling temperature and to um, yeah, release any stresses that are in the boiler plates from it being so cold for a while. Um, so now we're ready to light it up for today's steam test. The most important bit on the steam boilers when you're getting ready to light them up is to check that they've got water in them. So this gauge glass here is um, where we can see the boiler water level. At the moment it's turned off, we leave them turned off overnight. So we'll turn that on and we should get a water level. So you see here now the water level about halfway up the glass, bobbing up and down. We'll drain it, fill up again so we know that that's a true reading of the water level that's in the boiler. Um, that's plenty of water to light this engine up with, um, so we'll crack on and go through that process. Having had a fire in it yesterday, the engine's got the old fire still on the fire grate. We also need to inspect the firebox to check that there's no leaks occurred which we weren't previously aware of. So we'll do that first and then I'll get the fire irons and rake through what's left of the old fire to knock it through into the ash pan. Um, there'll not be a lot of talking, you'll not hear me while I'm doing that, um, but you can just sit back and watch. Having cleared the ash from yesterday's fire, all we've got left in there now is a little bit of unburnt coal. The firebox on coffee pots are quite big, um, so we need to put a little bit of fresh coal around the edges of the firebox first, um, which encourages the fire to spread evenly across the grate. So we'll do that and then we'll light up. Now on to the exciting bit for all the pyromaniacs in the world. We light the fire, much like house fire, um, start with something that burns really easy, uh, then light that, get that burning, put some wood on top of that, get the wood burning, the coal on top of that, and then the coal will catch. Um, in this particular case we're going to use a rag soaking diesel. Um, so an interesting point while we're lighting up, we've got a set of matches which were donated to us by our colleagues at the Christianstad Museum in Sweden when they visited in 2019. So we'll use one of those to light up, hopefully somebody's watching. We let the rag definitely catch fire before we put it into the firebox because you can guarantee if you don't it will go out on its way in. So you can see the wood's catching fire quite well. You can see the smoke coming out the chimney with the occasional wood smoke spark as well. With the wood burning well now, we can add a bit of coal on top to get the coal burning. So we'll do that and then it's time to leave it. Having added the coal to the fire now, it's quite a boring process of just waiting for the engine to come to the boil and start to produce steam pressure. Um, so we'll now 
go over to the wagon way where we'll see the steam test with Puffin Billy which has been in steam earlier on in the day. But once the steam engines have raised steam we carry out the steam test on the boiler which is the part two of their annual exam. Um, so once, once the engine's in steam um, the pressure's brought up to about its maximum working pressure. And at that point the boiler examiner goes round the engine, um, inspects everywhere he can get access to on the outside of the boiler. In theory he's looking for everything that's not there. Yeah, hopefully there's no, nothing leaking. At the same time the water gauge glass is tested under steam to prove that the passageways are clear. Um, the boiler inspector will look inside the firebox and inside the smoke box. Once we've proven all that's in order, we then run on to the accumulation test, which can be quite exciting. And hopefully we're going to see that in the next few minutes. So the accumulation test is we get the engine with a fire in it that's quite bright, very hot, and try to make the boiler produce steam as hard as it will. At that point the boiler pressure should come up to the maximum working pressure which in the case of Puffin Billy here is 55 pounds. At 55 pounds the safety valves will start to lift but we carry on trying to make the boiler produce more steam. The idea is that we're trying to prove that the safety valves can vent the steam the boiler can make and not allow the boiler pressure to creep up more than the maximum pressure that's allowed. So if we just wait here now, in theory we'll see the salter safety valve, which is the one that's already lifting with the plume of steam coming out, that plume of steam will get more intense and then there's a modern safety valve which normally sits under a cowling and that will lift as well with quite a pop and when both of those are lifting provided the pressure gauge is still reading no more than 5% over the red line 10% over the red line according to the boiler inspector then we're allowed to carry on with it We'd be hard pushed to get 1% with this engine, I think. Having completed the accumulation test, we check that the safety valves seat at an appropriate pressure. You don't want them dropping the pressure a massive amount, you just want them to bring it within the safe operating range of the engine. So they've now seated and you can just see the salter safety valve slightly wisping while the pressure is still quite high. The next thing the boiler inspector needs to see and check the function of is the devices for delivering water to the boiler. When you use steam in a steam boiler you mortgage off the water that's in the boiler so you need to replace that with water out of the tank. So on Puffin Billy there's two methods of doing that. There's the injector which doesn't have any moving parts 
and that uses steam and a series of cones to deliver water from the tank at this end of the engine um, to the boiler under pressure. The second method of delivering water to the boiler on Puffin Billy is a water pump which is driven by the motion of the engine um, so we need to move the engine for that. With all tests completed the boiler examiner basically makes notes of the tests and anything that he needs to note down in the official record um, and then we wait for the British Engineering Services surveyor to go back putting all the information that is taken down into their system and then Royal Mail deliver us the boiler certificates for the engines for the year and they're then valid for the next year of operation and we can operate the engines safely. So hopefully, as restrictions allow, you'll be able to ride behind Puffin Billy later this year and see Coffee Pot running the colliery. <laughs>